Welcome to Explore Like a Local. Join us as we venture our treasured communities in Southern California and showcase the best things to do while you're in town. The experiences we're highlighting are great for our clientele in the corporate events world, and even for couples on a getaway, family vacations, friend groups, and really anyone that is a travel junkie. Now let's begin exploring. Hi, I'm Brittany. I'm Sarah. Welcome to episode two in this three-part series all about Laguna Beach. In this episode, we are diving deep on the history of Laguna Beach and how it became the renowned artist town it is known for today. Now let's begin exploring the art and culture of Laguna. Laguna Beach was put on the map in the early 1900s when the town's magnificent coastline and scenic splendor attracted plein air artists seeking to capture its beauty. During this time, these artisans started the Laguna Beach Art Association, which allowed them to express their various creative platforms. This association included painters, writers, filmmakers, and photographers. Today, the artist community still exists and is made up with even more diverse craftsmen, from sculptors, woodworkers, metalworkers, glassblowers, jewelry makers, and many more. Now let's take a look on how the community has celebrated art through the years. It's hard to believe that the art festival traditions in Laguna Beach began almost a century ago. So we're talking 1920s. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little about how all that began? Yeah, so in the 1900s with all the people moving to Laguna Beach, all the artists due to the beautiful coastline, they really wanted to expand their community and showcase you know, their artwork and their skills and their artisans. And so the depression hit and it wasn't great. And with the Los Angeles Olympics happening in 1932, they really decided, okay, we're gonna take this opportunity, we're gonna try to draw on tourists, draw on people from LA to come into our beautiful little town mm -hmm. and see what we're all about and actually, you know, make some money and some showcase. And so they founded the concept, the Festival of the Arts, which had the artists show off their work, sell their artwork, and they also came up with this idea, this living pictures concept. Okay, so what yeah. is that? So with the living pictures concept, it's actually people who dress through paint and like costume and clothing to reenact portraying, reenact and portraying different classical and contemporary artworks. Mm -hmm. And so like the Last Supper picture that was that's always the finale mm -hmm. in this festival. And you know you have Jesus and the twelve disciples all dressed up and they stand perfectly still and they're reenacting the painting. So it's super just like dramatic and stunning. Wow, yeah. that kind of reminds me of an episode of Gilmore Girls I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is a good idea <laughs> from the Pageant of the Masters. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's known nowadays. So it has the Pageant of the Master Masters, and it's really, have, it's grown so drastically. That first year in 1931, 32, mm -hmm. they had um, just eight shows throughout the festival. And now the festival, every summer, has 56 showings, wow. and they're 90 minutes long now. Okay, that sounds like it's <laughs> a lot of people. Oh, it work. sure does. Every year, they have 1,200 people who volunteer and contribute wow, their all time. Volunteer. All volunteer work. And, you know, they have different shifts, but you could be from 4 to 80 years old to help portray the classical images. Okay. And, yeah. and when can you see the show? Yeah, so the show is July and August in the summer every year. Very cool. Yeah. So right across the street from the Festival of Arts is the Sadas Festival. Can you mm -hmm. tell us how that tradition began? Yeah, well everything was going just dandy at the Festival of Arts for 30 years. And then in 1965, there was a group of artists who did not agree with the jury system and they decided to break off and do their own festival. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is that first year in 1965 when they held their festival, the media claimed it as the Rejects Festival. So crushed their spirits a little bit and oh, they no. decided not to continue with it the next year. Okay, but it's still there today, so how did it recover? Well, in 1967, 
an artist was like, you know what? We got this. Let's do this. Let's give it one more go. Mm -hmm. And they had such great success, awesome turnout, great praise. They were actually able to find their forever home mm -hmm. in their current location today on Laguna Canyon Road. Okay. So what is, why is it called Sawdust Festival? <laughs> well, when they moved <laughs> into their forever home, it wasn't uh, conducive to all the art booths because it was just a big pile of muddy mess. <laughs> so they decided to get a lot of sawdust chips and throw them on the ground, and they still have them down there today. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about what you experienced there. Yeah, well, it's really a great show. Um, every artist gets to decorate their own booth. They have a designated spot. You can decorate it how you want. The artists are there, not only like, allowing you to purchase and display their artwork, but they want you to participate in their artwork, and they provide demonstrations. So it's mm -hmm. very an interactive experience. Yeah, like when we went, um, we saw a glass blower yep. um, working on her art and some plain air artists mm -hmm. painting. Yeah. There were two different musicians of two different sizes. Yeah. So big um, playing music. That was, that was mm -hmm. really fun. Yeah, it's a really great festival to like shop around and peruse. I, my mom goes every single year because there's this one jewelry maker and she has to get the newest and latest <laughs> necklace every single year. <laughs> um, so I, I grew up going to that show and it's always fun to see the new artisans. It's a non jury system, so you don't. There's no limitations to be an artist there, whether you're new or a veteran. The only limitation is that you have to reside in Laguna Beach to participate in showcase. Okay. And what time of year can you see the show? You can see the Sawdust Festival in the summer, and then they also have a special winter holiday showing as well. Nice. Yeah. So following in the Sawdust Festival Foundation footsteps, they, a group of artists did not agree with the residency limitations that they had, <laughs> and they decided to start their own art fair called the Guna Art Fair. Okay, so some more of a non-conforming artist. <laughs> yeah, you know, doing our own thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and these guys, they kept growing every year and they really struggled finding um, a location that was going to fit them. They just kept expanding and expanding. And it wasn't until 1988 they found their forever home, kind of right next to the Sawdust Festival on the Glenna Canyon Road. Okay, and, and what, what do you experience here? How is it different? Yeah, well it's different because artists globally can come and showcase their work. So they don't, they're not limited to just reside in Laguna. Mm -hmm. And it's also known as one of the most um, spectacular places to view traditional artwork in Southern California. And it has emerging, new emerging artists, as well as um, some award-winning artists too. And they're really proud of, you know, all the award-winning people that are there. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And, and when can you see this? How does it fit in the time frame festivals? Sure. So with this Laguna Art Affair, you can visit from July to September. and. Um, showcase, just see the showcase and purchase some artwork. In addition to all of the annual art festivals that happen every year, there's actually over a hundred art galleries to experience within downtown, um, along the coast, and on Laguna Canyon Road. We recommend checking out Laguna Art Museum, which is the first gallery founded in Laguna Beach in 1918, as well as Dawson Cole's Sculptor's Garden mm -hmm. and the Wyland Galleries, which is really world famous. Yeah. Every art gallery is truly unique, mm -hmm. and some even allow events such as cocktail receptions and networking events. Yeah, we did one last year actually for a client. Yes, at the Salt Fine Art Gallery, uh, guests were able to arrive and have some drinks and some food and have the gallery curator walk them through the artwork. And I think all of the artwork is that was all South American artists, yes, right? Yes, the fine feature of that gallery. Um, there's amazing photography mm -hmm. and sculptural art and paintings. It was really a great experience for guests. They got to do something a little more than just stand around some totally. food. Totally, like interacting and everything, mm -hmm. and actually like experiencing and immersing with the culture. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And then they were able just to walk across the street to <laughs> for dinner and had just a lovely Perks of a little Laguna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and then also too, another great way to view art is not just the galleries. You can just stroll through downtown or Main Beach all the way through High School Park and yep. you're always going to find a mural or some sculptures. Um, and, you know, it's always ever-changing 
Yeah, and uh, even more so in Heisler Park, it's this lovely park that runs along the coastline with yeah. breathtaking ocean views so beautiful. and a mix of permanent mm -hmm. and semi-permanent installations and then even some short-term installations. Yeah. There's sculptures, there's murals, mm -hmm. and an example, one of the semi-permanent ones was this sunset trace that we saw recently. So colorful. Oh my yeah. <laughs> the rainbow of these fluttering um, yeah. pieces that were just really beautiful and yeah. overhead. Yeah, I'm just so bummed that they're not keeping it up forever. <laughs> like, why not? It was so cool. Definitely. I mean, every time you go, I know. you are work to discover. So yeah, we're, we're always like, okay, let's go check out the ice for this time. <laughs> but definitely worth a visit. While within a beach, be sure to experience and immerse yourself in the arts and culture that make up this small, eclectic beach town. One way you can really immerse yourself is by doing a walking tour that's all about the art and history of Laguna Beach. It starts at the Festival of the Arts, it goes through downtown, out to Main Beach, and up to Heisler Park, and gives you all the golden nuggets about art, Laguna's art history. <laughs> you can also really get in on the action by booking a art class or a mm -hmm. workshop. Either you can join a class that's already existing yep. or you can book a private workshop. Um, a variety of things include glass blowing, yep. jewelry making, um, <laughs> air painting, which is hard work. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Worth it. laughs> and recommended, I mean, the, the landscape around the community is obviously stunning and worth painting. painting. And then also another cool thing is uh, tide pool photography mm -hmm. or just photography in general. We have yeah. a friend, Derek, who's a fantastic photographer yeah. and has some stunning photographs of the coastline, including the uh, pirate tower mm -hmm. at the Victoria Beach. Yeah. So definitely a cornucopia of things to do. Yeah, we're getting your toes in the sand and out on a tide pool to get some good photographs. When visiting Laguna Beach, be sure to immerse yourself in the arts and culture scene. For our corporate clients, we are here to help curate and customize art workshops, tours, and experiences to best meet your vision. Private classes and workshops can be done through the Sawdust, and we work with other artists that are independent and book their own private experiences. We are happy to help you curate and customize some fun tours for your guests to make sure they're getting the full Laguna Beach experience. Thank you so much for tuning in and discovering Laguna Beach's art history with us this week. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on those notifications. Please leave a comment on which festival is your favorite or which you would most like to experience. And follow along as our next video that ends our three-part series is all about Laguna Beach's food and beverage scene. <laughs> Bye! See you next week!